Welcome to the lesson on Big Data Ecosystem after Spark. In this lesson, we are going to talk, answer a very common question in the industry whether Spark will replace Hadoop or not. To be able to answer that, first we need to understand the Big Data Ecosystem a little bit more detailed and then understand a Spark to the whole ecosystem. Before we can approach that question, we need to first understand in Hadoop, there are two main components. One is the storage layer where you're going to store the data in the form of HDFS and then you're going to process that data. And processing of the data in the original Hadoop was done by MapReduce. And that there lies most of the answer. Spark is a processing engine, which means it would start replacing MapReduce, but not replace the storage side of HDFS. That starts answering the question in briefly yes and no. But let's go a little deeper. This is the overall ecosystem of Hadoop color coded in different formats. We have the green highlighted storage layers of HDFS and HBase. Then we have the yellow highlighted regions of processing and the several red highlighted areas which are used by administrators to administer the Hadoop system. Finally, we have the blue area of scoop and flume to help us to ingest or get data into the Hadoop system. So let's try to see the impact of Spark on this overall ecosystem. So as I highlighted, Spark is not going to interfere with the storage area being the green highlighted areas of HDFS and HBase. And also it's not going to impact much of the administrator areas with Rambari, Uzi, and Zookeeper. So how does it impact the rest of the ecosystem? Let's take a look at that. The main change is going to be replacement of MapReduce with the Spark's core engine. The YARN part is still going to remain, but the MapReduce engine will be replaced by Spark. And this is very much known in the industry. So the recommendation to any new company starting big data would be to use Spark as its processing engine and not MapReduce. But there are several companies which have already included MapReduce and will continue to do, use them for several years. So MapReduce still remain in the industry for some time. The other good thing which Spark has done, instead of creating several languages like Hive, Pig and several of these languages, it took an approach to define libraries, which is much easier to understand, learn and use. That's why it is really popular in the ecosystem that Spark is getting such a kind of traction. So let's go one by one. We had Hive, which provided Hive capa SQL capabilities on top of MapReduce. So similarly, Spark provides as a Spark SQL library. That library allows us to do SQL capabilities on the Spark core engine. Next, for R capabilities, Instead of R connectors, it has called a Spark R library, which helps to do integration with the R language. For machine learning, it has Spark MLib, which can be considered as a replacement to Mahout or other similar tech machine learning languages. To ingest data, we had Flume and several other alternatives available. Spark provides a Spark streaming, which can help us in that ingestion, but also do real-time processing of the data while it is coming in the Hadoop system itself. So that's a very powerful use case. Finally, we have some of the other capabilities which were not even addressed by the existing ecosystem. Spark has a library called Spark GraphX, which provides us connections and abilities to interact with social media, which you may have heard about social graph by Facebook, etc. It's not only just social media where GraphX capabilities come into picture, but it is used in the Google's page rank and several other things. You can think wherever there are connections, friend linkages, connections, Spark GraphX or any GraphX technology could be useful. There are upcoming libraries like BlinkDB, which is an interesting feature of Spark, providing you capability to get answers for a SQL kind of answers in a stipulated amount of time, 
For example, if you are running a SQL query on a huge set of data, it may take you hours and sometimes days. Blink DB allows you to have the capability to just be able to precisely get your answer at certain defined intervals. So you might say, I want the answer for the SQL in 10 minutes. Even if it is not 100% accurate, I need some probable correct answer. And that's acceptable in some scenarios. So that's where libraries like Spark, Blink DB come into picture. So as you see, the library set keeps on growing and growing, and it's even overtaking what was created in the Hadoop's ecosystem. Pig, for that matter, Pig can be considered as the, the processor of Spark. Many of the capabilities like lazy execution and the way Spark works is very similar to Pig. But I would say Spark is a much more elegant architecture system and much, much better version than Pig. When you put this together in a visual way, you start seeing the impact of Spark. And this animated kind of slide shows us most of the processing area has been covered by Spark just by itself and it's through its library which is a very welcome change in the industry. It makes life of the developers easy so that they are tackling one particular component, which is Spark, though it has several libraries and details around that, but also easier for the customers and businesses to use it instead of having to tackle Mahout and Hive and Pig and several of these languages. It makes life much, much easier. And that's why along with its great architecture, Spark makes life easier and that's why it's very much popular in the industry. So that gives us a quick glimpse of the impact of Spark on the Hadoop ecosystem. Thank you.